All right, guys, so today I'm going to show you how to disassemble a Martini Henry Cadet. Uh, this is my little cadet rifle that um, I picked up probably two years ago, but it is a, it's actually a chambered 218B, which is kind of cool. Um, had a little bit of, the guy, whoever did the original conversion kept the barrel profile and everything the same, so you could use the actual military forend which is pretty cool. So it goes all the way down to the barrel. I like that look. Uh, up until now, I've had this little Lyman Alaskan with a target dot reticle mounted on there. And uh, it's been a pretty fun little shooter. I have these little 50 grain lead bullets with gas checks that I lo load pretty low velocity to plank out of it. And it's a lot of fun. Um, another thing kind of cool about this is this stock actually has a lot of figure to it. And uh, the 7-Eleven you see here, that is August of 1911. So kind of a cool history there. Commonwealth of Australia stamp on there. But uh, then the, my favorite part of all is the uh, kangaroo logo right there. So I'm going to show you guys how to disassemble this because there's a couple little tricks that can uh, save you a headache later on down the road. So first and foremost is this pin right here. Yes, it's a pin. It's not a screw. You can put a screwdriver in there and turn it and do everything and it will not do anything. On the other end, it looks like it's a screw as well, but it's not. It's actually a split pin. So that's what we're going to take care of first. Uh, that's the biggest hang up on these for most people. You get the correct size punch. Give it a couple sharp whacks, and you can see it's coming out there now. That's what that looks like. So when you put it back in there, there's only one side that it goes in and you'll be able to see that. Um, all right, so this is your whole trigger and breech block assembly. It's pretty nice that it just pops out like this. I don't believe the full-size martinis are like this. I think it is just the cadets, but um, so basically this is how it works. It's very, very simple. Um, you have this little piece here, which is the first one we're going to take out, is your is your cocking indicator. So when you bring it back up, that is saying that it is cocked. I'm going to just lower the firing pin. And you can see that when it is lowered, it does not sit above that breech block. Once again, when it's cocked, it protrudes above that breech block. Or that's simulating firing it. It is below the breech block. So this is similar to the takedown pin. It is another split pin that's a cross pin. So let me go ahead and push that out. This one is in there not nearly as much. My little two ounce ball ball peen will take care of that so I'll pull that out next is your extractor so this is where your extractor is sitting on the barrel sitting in the barrel there you can see this little lip that's attached to it when you lower that breech block this would normally stay in there when you had a shell but it trips that lever and pulls it back So take that out, there's just one pin holding it in, it's usually a pretty loose fitting pin. And you can slide that out. Okay, so now I'm going to push out the breech block pin. You should only need up some real light taps here with the two ounce ball peen, um, or, I mean, or whatever hammer you have, but you don't need a lot of pressure to tap that out. Okay, so now I'm going to pull the trigger and let it forward, it's relieving the spring pressure and that lets the breech block pull out. So your breech block has the firing pin assembly and spring in there, which I'll show you how to take apart that in a second. Now we have our trigger, the sear, which also works as kind of your release for the striker, because if the firing pin is a striker assembly on this, it's not hammer fired. Um, now we're gonna take out the lever and what I'm gonna keep calling the sear pin, I, I should have looked it up before the video what it was called, but I apologize for that.
Okay, so this piece here, what it does is it hooks up in here, and that's what cocks the firing pin. You can actually see the firing pin moving in and out when I do that. That is connected with the lever here. And at a certain point, when you bring the lever down, it bottoms out, and that's what rotates and cocks it. Then your sear here, your sear notch, catches on the trigger. So that's why when you open it, it cocks. And as you bring it back down, that stays back there until it's released. So now the trigger. The trigger is, it looks like a split pin again, but and it's not actually. It's This one's a screw as well. So you unscrew that. There's a very slight amount of spring pressure on there. It's not very much. It's enough to make it not want to come out. Super easy. Okay. Now that this trigger is out, I'm going to, so there is a trigger spring in there. I'm going to leave that in there just because that screw is really buggered up, which means it probably is in there pretty tight. Um, but here's your trigger assembly. So I'm going to assemble this on the outside of the gun real quick just to kind of show you how this works. So here you have your trigger and then your sear assembly. So there's your sear engagement surface there. When you pull the trigger, it moves that out of the way and allows that to move forward. Once again, that is hooked up under here on the firing pin. So when that is released to go past that trigger, that's what's letting that firing pin go forward. Okay, for the breech block disassembly, this screw right here locks this collar. Uh, don't make the same mistake I just did and put screwdriver bit through your finger. So unscrew that. There's your, what retains your firing pin in there. Now you have your firing pin and your firing pin spring. So just like you had the other way, now you're gonna put that bushing back in. This bushing's kind of tapered so it'll You'll be able to see when it blends nicely at the back of the breech block. And then obviously you need to line it up with that screw hole, that locking screw hole. Okay, breech block's back together. Now we're going to do everything in reverse. We'll put the trigger in here first. screw does not need to be super tight. Okay, now we're going to put the lever in. comes in from the top because that won't slide in from the bottom. Lever and then your sear slash uh, striker release, I guess you would call it. This is where alignment pins really come in handy. Just stick that in there, find it, line it up. Now we're gonna do breech block. So in order to get this breech block in, you wanna pull this trigger, release that. Then, okay. So this firing pin isn't lined up properly right now. It needs to be lined up with the little slot. Right there's the slot. So it just turned it, turns pretty easy. It's actually slotted in the back so that you can kind of finagle that to get it how you want. It snaps right in. Check function. Cocks. All right, it's cocked, ready to go. Let it down, decock. Perfect. So I'm going to cock it so that I can put the cocking indicator 
back in place. Very simple, it just rides in that little track. Now the extractor, I'm gonna put the lever up for that. Okay, the extractor's in place. Now to reassemble the whole thing. This is another place where the bench blocks just come in handy. I'm actually gonna put one down here too to keep everything elevated off the off the bench. Okay, so this this little uh, tab here slides up into a pocket in the receiver, so that's the main one that you gotta make sure you get lined up. Now as you're pushing it in, you wanna kinda of be applying pressure this way, and that gives you clearance with the extractor there. So now the split pin. And if you look inside there, you can see the little grooves. So this side doesn't have it. But if you look in on this one, there is a little groove to accept that split pin collar. Now, as I'm pounding this in, I'm gonna switch to a polymer hammer just to be easier on it. Watch how that screw head kind of, see how it pinches together to get into that hole? And then splits back out. Now for the forearm, I don't know if mine was modified or not from the original military one, so I don't, I can't guarantee yours will be the same, but this just had some under lugs and some pins through it that kind of held the forearm on. But yeah, that is the assembly and disassembly of the Martini Cadet rifle. If you ever have a chance to mess around with one of these, they're, they're a lot of fun, really cool light, probably weighs five and a half pounds. It was a trainer for the Australian military. But if you guys have any questions or if I missed anything, just let me know in the comments. Thanks.